talk to you for some few minutes about what I entitled the benefits of waiting on the Lord. The benefits. I tell somebody there are benefits in waiting. Waiting. Say waiting. waiting. On the Lord. Oh. Hallelujah. He didn't say waiting on your uncle or your auntie or your brother or your cousin or your government or your political party. But he said, those that wait on the Lord. And today we have a generation that don't want to wait. They want everything right now. And everything that comes to you that you haven't worked for, labored for, and earned it is not yours. You will eventually lose it. And that's why people become big overnight. Multi-millionaires overnight, they get exposure overnight, success overnight, increase overnight, power overnight, and they are destroyed overnight because shortcut will cut you short. Today, people want overnight success in every works of life. <clears throat> Not only in politics, in the church. There are pastors, there are bishops, there are evangelists, there are prophets who want overnight success. They want what they see. They see things they like and they don't know how many years and decades it has taken some of us to come that far. And they see what you have and they want it. And they don't know the price and the cost that goes with what they see. And so they get it. And because they haven't paid the price for it, they lose it. And they can't stand the test of time. They can't endure the storms of life. When the flood comes, they are carried away. When the wind blows, they disappear. And when it rains, they drown. But there is a generation called the remnant that survives all things. Because they've been tried, they've been tested, they've been through the mail, they've gone through the process of change. I preached a message yesterday to, the, to over 2,000 young students going to the university, and I preached to them on the subject I entitled Developing Capacity Through Due Process. If you don't develop capacity for anything, that comes to you, you are not qualified for it. And whatever you didn't earn, you don't have the experience and the discipline to keep it. You lose it. And I don't want any overnight success. Because overnight success can end your career overnight. Anything you get overnight, you lose it overnight. Instant breakthrough, you lose it Instantly. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible said a man built on the sand and another built on a rock. And the one that built on a rock, it took him a long time to build on a rock. Then another came on the scene and overnight, like a lot of churches and ministry today, they are growing overnight. Come from nowhere. No experience. Not groomed and trained by anybody. Nobody groomed them. Nobody lay hands on them. They appeared in the sky. Just came on the scene. Never served anybody. Never waited on anybody. Having poured water on anybody's hands. And they just come on the scene through social media. And all kinds of strategies. And they raise a church. And they know all the things that people like. And they grow overnight. And when I see I laugh. Because I've seen those kind before. They come... Like a lightning. Pow! Like a falling star, they disappear from the clouds and you don't see them. And the Bible said, one built on the sand and another on the rock. And the one that built on the rock, it took him a long time. Long time to build on a rock. He had to dig into the rock. Efforts, time, sacrifice, patience, endurance, tenacity, staying power. Despising the shame, overlooking mockery, despising the 
the perceptions of man. And the Bible said, after a long time came a rain, and the rain stands for blessings. And the blessing will test you and I. You want to see who a true person is? Wait until they are blessed. You never know folks when they are broke. I've seen people hold my Bible and call me Papa when they were broke until they were blessed. And as soon as they got blessed, they changed. Don't you ever trust anybody until you've tested them. And one of the ways I will give you certain things you need to see people handle before you trust them. Because you never know who an individual is until they are blessed. It is the blessing of the Lord that reveals the intent, motives, and what is in individuals. You never know what is in an individual till they get blessed. And the wind blew, and the wind stands for change. There will be changes. Life is full of changes. And changes come to test and to try us and to see what kind of material we are made out of. And the flood came when the enemy comes in as like a flood. The spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him and the flood stands for demonic invasions and attack. And every now and then the enemy and the adversary of humanity will lift up its head and Satan is busy around the clock. Looking and seeking whom he may devour. And the one built on the sun could not stand. He didn't have enough foundation. He didn't have enough character and experience and discipline to endure the storm, the wind, the change. Blessing can test you and blessing can reveal your motive and who you are. I've seen so many bishops and pastors and Men of God and businessmen and women in the church and prophets and politicians destroyed by a blessing. Whenever Satan decides to destroy somebody, all he has to do is to give them a premature exposure and success and they will die prematurely. That's all. There are some things I can comfortably handle today that if God had given it to me five years ago, it would have destroyed me because I wasn't ready for it. I'm telling you. There's power, exposure, that don't move me anymore. And before, some of those things that God has blessed me with today would have destroyed me. So it's necessary to go through the process the Bible said that after Elijah had prophesied and said there shall be no rain for three years and six months, the Lord took him to the brook and said, stay there, there at the brook I will feed thee. Then in the process of time, the word of the Lord came the second time and said, change location and go to Zarifa, there will I sustain thee. And he was there and in the process of time, the word of the Lord came to him the third time and said, go show yourself to Ahab. From sending abundance of rain to the earth. So it was from feeding to sustenance to abundance. It's process. There are a lot of young men and young women that want to get married today. Who have no idea of what marriage is all about. Boys marry for affection and for sex and for looks and for likes. But men marry for purpose. <laughs> Marriage is for men and not for boys. Boys are dependent, but men are independent with purpose. And marriage is not for love, it's for a cause greater than yourself. For this cause shall a man live his father and mother, not for affection or feelings.
Tell somebody, I need you to grow up. I need you to grow up. I need you to grow up. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. Has thou not known? Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? Have you not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, yes, fainted sir. not, neither is weary. Fainted not, and neither is weary. Have you not heard, not been told? Go ahead. There is no searching of his understanding. Yes, sir. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Uh -huh. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. Uh -huh. And the young men shall utterly fall. Uh -huh. But they that wait upon the but, Lord but, shall but, renew but, but, their strength. But, 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 That's another title mm -hmm. of a message. But, 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 but. Somebody say, but, 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 but. Oh, Lord, I love that one. But. Shouting, shouting. But. Ah! My God, my God, my God. Bringing closure to one age. And dispensation and opening up another dispensation like when John the Baptist was beheaded his blood sealed up the Old Testament and when Jesus was slain and sacrificed his blood opened up the New Testament are you hearing me somebody so one thing came to an end when he said bad it means a closure and a new opening but look at it but but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength my, 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 my. i love it i love it this is my fifth service today this is my number five service today but they that wait upon the lord sabahaya renew their strength Ah. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall mount up with wings. The, 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 the wings of the eagle. One side of the wings of an eagle is nine feet. You see one side here is nine feet. This other side is nine feet. So both 18 feet. Mount up with wings. Keep it, keep it there a little bit. I want to, I want to keep looking at it. So... <laughs> At the top, and, and you know some characteristics of the eagle that blows that blew my mind when I was studying today. The eagle makes love in the air. It conceives in the air and gives birth to its baby on the mountain top. Nalagudala Magadas. Madula Kadawahalasia. Hey! Ikadabusia. That is who you are. Look at you. That is you. Tell somebody that is you. That is you. Soaring in the air. Above the hills and the mountains of life. That is where you belong. Tell two people. That is you. That is you. That is you. You are like the eagle. Go ahead. They shall run and not be weary. Run. Run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint what cannot faint amen there are benefits of waiting on the lord and we'll come back to see the benefits of waiting on the lord one of the benefits is that you renew your strength so if you don't wait your strength will never be renewed and the reason why a lot of folks are weary and fatigued and tired frustrated discouraged and giving up on life is because they haven't learned the skills and the protocols of waiting on the law. If you wait, you renew your strength. Amen. Amen. If you wait, you renew your strength. If you wait on the law, you will mount up with wings as an eagle. There is something about the eagle that stares up the waters in my womb. You women, you think you're the, you're the only one that have a womb. Men also have wombs. I got me a womb also. Hallelujah. So number one, you renew your strength. Number two, you do what? You mount up. With wings. Do you know you have wings? You have wings. Tell somebody, I have wings. 
tell somebody it's time to fly. It's time to fly. It's time to fly about all this pettiness. It's time to fly to, to attitudes in God where the storms of life and the temptations and the envies and the trials of life can touch you. The snake cannot get to the eagle at that altitude. The snake cannot survive in that altitude because oxygen is required because the eagle flies sometimes 30,000 feet above sea level. The eagle. Snakes can survive at that altitude. Lions can survive at that altitude. Other birds cannot survive at that altitude. You need to soar into altitudes in God where nothing can touch you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Lift up your hands and shout, Yes! Yes! The eagle. The eagle. Number one benefit. You will renew your strength. Two, you will mount up with wings as eagle. Number three. You shall run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. Number four. Sometimes people and folks look at me and say, Are you not tired? And I said, I'm just beginning. Are you not weary? I'm just beginning. I'm not tired. You know why? Because I'm not living by a natural life. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Kadobo shikadahaya sita. Matila kawala hasa. My God, my God, that inner man inside is renewed daily. My inner man is renewed daily. There's a blessing in waiting on the Lord. And this generation don't know anything about waiting. What is waiting? Waiting simply means being in anticipation or expectation till your turn comes. Till your turn. Till your turn comes. You got to be in expectation. And you see that the eagle... The eagle is a very wise bird because the eagle is a very patient bird. The eagle has to wait for a strong wind or a storm to come. And there are many winds that will come, but the eagle has to wait and be very key and sensitive to the strongest wind with the strongest current. And then it jumps and songs at the back of the storm or at the back of the current of the wind so it doesn't use its feathers it doesn't exercise and uses its energy it preserves its energy and it flies right on the back of what others call storm the eagle who jump at the back of it and allow the current of the wind to carry it to preserve its energy it's not every battle you fight when you learn how to lean on the spirit are you hearing me you can preserve your energy lean
has learned how to live on the wings of the wind. Some few characteristics of the eagle. The eagle soars and excels in the mix of storm. The eagle have two set of eyes. One eye it sleeps and rests with. Another eye of the eagle comes on when the eagle is in the mix of storms. Then that eye comes on when the eagle is flying in higher altitudes and the first set of his eyes will be destroyed and damaged because of the oxygen level at that level. Another eye comes on that can handle the, the strength of the wind and the storm and the oxygen level at that altitude. And you know, we have two sets of eyes. We have a natural eye. Then we have a spiritual eye. And we see in the natural, but we also see in the spiritual. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. That the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. We call it the eyes of our understanding. Place your hands on your eyes and say, Enlighten down my eyes. Enlighten down my eyes, Lord. Enlighten down my eyes. You can't depend on your natural eyes only. You have another set of eyes. And that kind of, that eyes don't come on till the eagle is in the mix of a storm. And it navigates the storm with that other eye. It's two set of eyes. You need more than these natural eyes to see what these natural eyes can see. Jesus said the other day, eyes have they, but they see not. And let him that have ears to hear, hear. That means he's not referring to this one. There's another ear inside. My God, my God. You have two sets of eyes. You need to pray for a recovery of your spiritual eyes that you may see beyond what the natural eyes can see i talked this morning when i preach on courage that you can't depend on your senses for we walk by faith and not by senses not by what we feel taste hear touch or see by faith the eagle you are an eagle you have two sets of eyes. Turn on your spiritual eye in the mix of crisis and in the mix of the storm. The eagle sees the outcome. It sees beyond. It can be 30,000 feet above sea level and see a fish in the sea. And can track it from that level and come down all the way to the sea or to the river and pick up that fish. It can see a rat, an eagle. And the rat will run into a hole and stay there for an hour or two. And the eagle will tarry and stay put and wait for the rat to come out. And in a second, pow, it pounds on it and it has lunch or dinner. Hallelujah. My God, my God, teach me how to wait, Lord. Teach me how to wait. You got to learn to wait. Hebrews 10, 36. For ye have need of patience, that after that ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Look at me, folks. If you don't learn patience, which is an attribute of waiting, you can miss the promise. You can miss the promise after you have done the will of God. And I've seen so many folks, even in this church, including pastors, men of God, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, bishops, businessmen and politicians, missing the promise because they didn't cultivate and develop staying power and endurance and patience. And they missed it. Just before the blessing and the promise came, they were out of place. May you not miss it. May you not be out of alignment. 
And I have seen people miss it. And there have been times in my life when I was going through crisis. And the Lord will speak to me and say, and I'll tell Bishop Nyakum, and I'll say, so so and so is going to leave us. So so and so will leave. And you say, but how? And I say, oh, they'll leave. Because they are not meant to be part of the glory that is coming. So God is using the mess and the storms and the crisis now to give them opportunity to leave us. Because they are not meant to be part of the glory coming. And for whatever reason, the first thing they do, they come and say, I'm going to spend time to wait on the Lord. I'm going to fast and pray. And as soon as they say that, I tell Bishop, the spirituality has come. The devil is waiting for them to minister to them. They will come back and they say, the Lord has spoken to them. They have to move on. And I've seen it over. The same with business people in the church. I've seen them. Especially business people, as soon as they get blessed, they change. Their commitment change. They don't sit where they used to sit anymore. They don't come to church when they're supposed to come. The Muslims are not like that. When you go to Dubai or Qatar or anywhere, they all go to church the same time. They pray the same time. They don't care who you are. They have no respect of who you are. They all pray at the same time, do things together. We believers, we are not like that. We get a little bit of promotion, a little bit of money, a little bit of success, we change. And God can trust us. God can depend on us. I've had businessmen and women who had nothing. They were picking taxis and walking on the junction here. Today they are riding all kinds of cars. And they don't help the church and bless the house. When they get blessed, they hold back. They don't even want the church and God to know they have been blessed. Say, Father, when you bless me, I'll not be like others. I'll not be ashamed of you. I'll not hold back what is due your house or your servant. I'll not make excuses to disobey your word in holding back what is due you. The tithe, the tithe of the business, the first fruits. And that's why a lot of Christians are struggling. I see a lot of Christians, they are struggling, struggling. Always struggling because they are smart. They want to be smart. Let me give you some few keys before we go into prayer. See, I hear you. Some of the characteristics of an eagle. The eagle is extremely bold. Extremely bold. The Bible said the righteous are like a lion. But the wicked run it when no man pursue it. But the righteous are bold as a lion. The eagle is courageous. The eagle is powerful. Like David, he killed Goliath. He killed a lion and a bear. Extremely bold, courageous, powerful. You are extremely bold. You are courageous. You are powerful. And you don't even know it, but you are. That's who you are. See, I hear you. The eagle flock together. The eagle don't mix with other birds. <laughs> they don't mix with other birds. You know, as time goes on in my life, I realize that as much as I love people and I want to be with everybody and I want to mingle with everybody and I want to hang with everybody, I realize I can't do it. As time goes on, I realize I can't spend my time with everybody because some people just waste your time. I, I don't, time is of the essence and it's the only commodity that you cannot buy at the market. You can't buy time at ShopRite. Nowhere. You can't. And I'm, as time goes on, I realize that I can't hang with some people and I can't mingle with some people. It's a waste of my time. It's a waste of my energy. They take too much of my time. They go into the time where I have to feed myself so I can feed others. I have to eat to feed. And anything that takes the time of feeding me in order to feed you is an enemy and a distraction. So the eagle... Don't mingle with other birds. They flock together. And the eagle don't trust unless they test you. 
Bishop, tell us why the eagle and how the eagle tests before the trials. The research reveals that the female eagle uh -huh. will need to test the males. Uh -huh. They take a twig, fly high up and drop it. And the male is supposed to go down and pick it and bring it up again. Mm -hmm. And then they fly higher and drop it again. And the male is to go down and bring it. If the male masters picking up the twig and coming all the way up, then you qualify to father their eaglets. Somebody say, hey, 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 hey. That's why they make love in the air. They conceive in the air. And they give birth on the mountain's top. And they live in the wilderness places. Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years. David, 30 to 15 years. In the wilderness and in the caves. Going through due process. And that's why David could last on the throne for 40 years. Today, a lot of folks are not lasting in the ministry, nor in business, nor in anything. Because they haven't been through the process. They haven't been to the backside of the desert. They haven't been to the wilderness. They want the anointing. They want the giftings. But they haven't been tested. And they haven't been tried. The eagle knows how to wait. And it has to wait for the right wing and the right current of that wing to come so it can go on the back of that current. And if it doesn't wait and it moves because the wind is, its wind is heavy, it will die prematurely. Because it will exert too much energy. So you have to learn how to preserve your energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to learn to let others go so I can soar. I love this thing called the eagle. It's a very wise bird. It soars. It is said that sometimes it goes to the same level of the jets. 37,000 feet above sea level and it put on another set of eyes that can see at that level and altitude and be able to manage and to master the storm and to have oxygen at that level and altitude. That is what God requires of you and I. Coming up here, deep calls unto deep. Rising up and coming up in the spirit to altitudes and dimensions where no beast. Madula Makatila has it. Where no envy, no ex, no curse, no divination, no witchcraft, no enchantment, no family or generational curse, no ill will, no diviner, no wise men, enchanters, no projection of the enemy or their predictions. Or demonic consultation or soulish prayers can touch you because you are in an attitude that anybody that tries to come there will die. Tell somebody, don't try me. And don't try to access me or engage me. Tell someone, don't try me, don't try me. Don't try to access me. Don't engage me. You are not an eagle. You are not an eagle. You are not an eagle like me. Where I saw on top of mountains, you don't have in your DNA what it takes to go that far. I see, a, and I know a lot of people who sometimes they look at me and all kinds of things run through their minds, and sometimes people are jealous and envious of you and. They, have, they wish you all kinds of things and I just speak a word backfire somebody say I command their thoughts and ill wills and imaginations and wishes to backfire let it turn on them you know what few things you must do number one before you trust anybody 
see how they deal and handle their anger and that is to every young man and young woman who wants to marry don't just marry because she looks good or he looks handsome see how he handles his anger when he's angry how does he deal with it check it out because if you don't you can marry a handsome and a beautiful chick and when that anger in her comes out and when she's angry she will break she will break the bed she'll break all the glasses in the house the plates throw everything in the air and you say hey in the name of Jesus and she said, what, what Jesus? What Jesus? What, you, before you trust, you must test. So number one, before you trust and commit yourself, see how they handle anger. I want to know what you do when you're angry. Do you talk? Do you destroy? Do you go all over town, tweeting, texting, emailing, Instagramming and sending pictures? Of the nakedness of your boss and your elders? Do you go telling everybody what's going on? Because you are angry. Then when you come to yourself, you say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry is not enough. I don't want any sorry around me. I don't need you to hurt me and then say sorry. I'm not giving you the pleasure to hurt me. Go hurt somebody else, not me. I've been too hurt. So young man, Young lady, before you say I do, find out how he or she deals with anger. Find out. Don't just say, he makes me laugh. Good. He can feel me and I feel him and he smells good. All that is sinking sound. You feel me? Do you feel me? I feel you. I feel you too. But let's see how we all handle angry, anger. When you are angry, what do you do? That's the first thing you got to test people on. Well, go ahead and give God some clap offering in the house. Number two. Number two, write it down. Number two. See what happens and what they do when they are hurt. When they are hurt. And everybody gets hurt. And everybody will be hurt. So find out. What do they do when they are hurt? When they are offended? Do they destroy? Shut down? Don't return calls? What do they do? The way you handle pain tells me who you are. Maturity is known and defined by the way you handle pain and offenses, not the way you handle love and not the way you handle joy. Everybody can be loved when he has love. Everybody can love in the atmosphere of love. But it's when you are hurt. When you are hurt. So the way people handle pain and offenses shows their level of maturity. That's how you find out, young lady, how mature this guy is and how he's going to hang with you. Because there will be times in the marriage where you can't give him honey. And when you don't look pretty like you do right now, you're going to be melting very soon. You know why women spend all time trying hours trying to they go into change and they spend hours because they are melting Mel, men melt but it takes time for them to melt because they don't have all the features God put in women that's why you see when he came to uh, he came to God forming the woman he put the man to sleep he said, listen, what I'm going to put together, you can't handle it. You'll be asking too many questions. I don't want interference. Go and sleep. First operation, put him under oxygen. Go to sleep. When you wake up, you'll appreciate what I've done. 
He woke up and he said, Whoa, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. God said, Look at you. You didn't do anything about it and you are naming it. <laughs> hmm? So see how people handle pain. Number three, number three, number three. See how they handle power. See power. You never know who an individual is till they have power. When they come into power, then you know who they are. And I've seen so many people in church who were nobodies and nothing till power came into their hands and suddenly they switch. If you don't switch after power comes into your hands and you are still the same, then I can trust you. But power exposes and reveals the true intent of people's heart. You never know people when they are broke. I'm telling you, take it from me. You never know people when they are broke. I have seen them over and over and over again. When they are broke, you never know who they are until they are power. Then suddenly, they change their talk. Even their walking change. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Power will expose you. Number four. Number four. Money. 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 Money will expose you. Money don't determine what I buy. I command money. You see, you can't command your boss. And the reason why a lot of you, you don't have money is because money is your boss. Money dictates your obedience to God. But those who have money has command over money. Because you can't command your boss, you can command your servant. How you handle money tells me who you are. I'm telling you, there are, I know a lot of people with money and I, I don't get too close to them. I'm telling you, you don't impress me at all. And there are people who are blessed, but they don't have money like those people have it. And I love them because of their values. They have values. And those are the things that move me. And I tell my children, don't fall for a pretty woman and for a pretty lady. Fall for a woman with values and character. And when you are falling, be careful how you fall and where you fall. But there are some falling you won't get up again. Money. How do you deal with money? The way you deal with money reveals and defines your love for God and who you are. I'm telling you. And I know you all believe in God for money. God will give you money to see who you are. Right now that you don't have money, I don't know who you are. I'm telling you. Another point quickly before I go. Success, success, fame, success. You're on top. You're on top. <laughs> My God, I wish I could tell you some of the stories of life and the experiences of my life. Uh. <laughs> success, success, fame. So the people pay money. They pay money. PR. They spend money. Thousands of dollars. So they can be the best person. Have a good name. Acceptance in society. Recognition. Fame. And you buy it with money. Sinking sand. Shame on you. 
You want true success? True success has nothing to do with how effective, progressive an individual may be. True success is how God defines it. Because heaven value system is different from earth value system. You know what true success is? True success is how you finish. Not what you have and where you are. True success is how you finish. Paul said, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished my cause. That is true success. And until you finish, you are not successful. So take it easy. Take it easy. You know, sometimes people ask me and say, what is the secret of the thing? I say, me? What did you say? Tell us the secret of your success. And I say, me? I'm not successful. I'm not successful. I'm not yet successful. It's how you finish the race. And some don't finish well. This race, eh? Is how you finish it. So take it easy. I'm telling you. I know you are connected. I know you have some savings outside and you are loaded. But take it easy. Because time changes. In conclusion, let's end with our scripture, Isaiah 40. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. May you be renewed in strength today. Because you came. You see, just coming to even the fourth service Sunday night is one of the ways of waiting on the Lord. Yeah. Being in anticipation of a promised change of an expected change and transformation is a blessing. May you mount up with wings, with wings as an eagle. My God, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk. And not faint. May that blessing and benefits be your portion.